This is a steam-powered model of the first successful propeller-driven ship, the SS Archimedes, originally launched in 1838. Maybe you have already seen the YouTube video, which tells the story of how and why this model was built. If so, you will have seen that this miniature version of the Archimedes has already made her maiden voyage under steam power in calm waters on a private lake. Today, the model faces a much bigger challenge, her sea trials. And there's one, I don't know what he's doing, misbehaving, I think. <coughs> Eric's now discussing where they slept. In stand up hammocks, Alex thought. Uh, they very tight quarters. Since the model's maiden voyage, she has been fully detailed with 23 crew members. This includes the official observer, Edward Chappell, sent by the Admiralty, and Francis Pettit-Smith, the inventor and promoter of the whole venture. William Mole, the model maker, has every reason to look nervous. His 1 to 24 scale model faces a swell of 6 inches, which in scale is equivalent to waves 12 feet high. The model is run with an open deck and a low freeboard, so there is a risk of flooding on top of the risks of losing radio contact or of the fire in the boiler being extinguished. Any of those could lead to the total loss of the model today. Final checks are carried out, and with a good head of steam in the boiler, the controls are checked and the rudder function goes from port to starboard. The propeller is ticking over gently and let's hope the model maker has checked the direction of rotation. We wouldn't want to launch the model with the engine in reverse. A final good luck from your model maker's wife. <laughs> She's in.
but she seems to be showing considerable reluctance to leaving the shoreline and clearing the breakwater. It takes a few minutes to realise that this is because the propeller is mistakenly set to going astern. The irony is that going astern is the most difficult manoeuvre for any ship to perform. Once the mistake is corrected, the model is handling well. Of the many things which can go wrong, none of them match the nervous tension that must have been felt by the inventor and original owner of the experimental Archimedes, Francis Pettit Smith. Not only was he under the scrutiny of Captain Chappelle from the Admiralty, but he was out to prove conclusively that propeller-driven ships were superior to paddle ships particularly in stormy conditions. Some seven miles north of this launch site at Sea Salter in North Kent, on the far side of the Thames estuary, is a sandbank known as the Nohor, which was the backdrop for William J. Huggins's depiction of the Archimedes from which this model has been reconstructed. The original vessel performed well on the high seas, and the design translates well into model form. One final challenge remains. To bring the model to heel in a strong cross-current, avoiding the breakwaters along the shoreline at sea salter. back safely, and indeed the maiden voyage of the experimental Archimedes from the Thames estuary to the ancient port of Dover proved the seaworthiness and practical application of the propeller for the first time. Subsequently, the vessel carried out a promotional tour around the whole of the British Isles and managed a deep sea voyage to Portugal. The Archimedes had proved the feasibility of screw propulsion and was the forerunner of all of today's propeller-driven ships. But sadly, it didn't make the fortune of its inventor, Francis Pettit Smith. For the full story, watch our video of Archimedes the Model, also on this YouTube channel. And remember to subscribe for any further updates.